This is a famous example from Dabawala. So these folks are based out of Mumbai and they're a classic case of Six Sigma. So what they actually do is they carry your lunch boxes from your home to your office because Mumbai is too crowded, very costly if you want to stay close to your office location. So you tend to stay in somewhat outskirts and then people travel from the outskirts to the office. It would take three hours one way to reach the office. So they get started very early. By the time they leave, lunch boxes are not ready. So these folks actually carry the lunch boxes from your home, deliver it to your office. That's one way. And after you have your lunch, they're going to take your lunch box back to your home. Or that's two way. You know, you can either opt for that or you can opt for an option wherein they just carry the lunch box and deliver it to you. And what they are doing here is color coding. They have coded all the green color lunch boxes with green, sorry, they've color coded a specific set of lunch boxes with green color. Probably they will take that to the east region, maybe. And a few of the lunch boxes are color coded in blue color. Probably they will take that to a west region. Red color lunch boxes go to north and yellow color go to south region. Maybe I'm just sensing, yeah. So how are they grouping or clustering the lunch boxes together? Based on region. This is a classic example of clustering. What are, what, what are we trying to do? We are trying to cluster the related lunch boxes together. And this is exactly what your Dabawala folks do. Also, there is another example pertaining to your shopper stop, which is a leading retail store in India. Yeah, so what these folks do is, or what they have already done is, they have started giving this card, loyalty program scheme, right? And whenever you purchase any garment, you can accrue some points if you have this card, membership card. For you, it is all about accruing the points against purchasing some garments. However, for the shopper stop, it is all about capturing your buying behavior and clustering the users into various related groups. And here they have come up with something, uh, something like a bridge to luxury, luxury, premium, value, depending on the brands they choose. They have subgrouped or clustered the users into these kind of groups. What was the ultimate business objective here? The bridge to luxury was now uh, or earlier it was contributing to only 2% of the sales from the time it was implemented. It has taken three years to mature and they are now making 15% of the sales from bridge to luxury uh, cluster, a segment of people basically. So these are the people who are almost purchasing the luxury goods but they were not purchasing the luxury goods. So maybe they have devised a strategy to send emails with special discounts to the luxury products. And once people purchase, start purchasing luxury products, they would not allow to purchase substandard products. Clustering is a term from statistics perspective. Segmentation is a term for the same thing from marketing perspective. So that is how you can probably segment. Now, so clustering is all about data segmentation, right? And it is an exploratory method. And your objective here is to identify the homogeneous groups. When I say homogeneous groups, groups which are similar to that, groups which are very similar to each other. Or people who are similar to each other or group or products which are similar to each other or services that you provide. You're probably trying to group related things together. So the primary objective of clustering is as follows. Similar records should belong to the same cluster and dissimilar records should belong to different clusters. So if you create a cluster or group of related products or services or humans or whatever be it, 
there has to be a lot of similarity between these people because what are you trying to do? You're trying to group related things together. Also, if you want to segregate the group of people in this cluster with a group of people in another cluster, there should be a lot of dissimilarity. I mean, it should not so happen that, hey, there is a person here. We don't know whether he has to belong to this group or that group. There should not be such ambiguity. You'd get that ambiguity if this cluster and this cluster are close to each other on whether this person should belong to this cluster or this cluster. For example, say you have a cluster very close in that, right? And you have a group of people whom you have clustered. So you, it, you should not be in a perplex situation to decide on whether this person should belong to cl this cluster A or cluster B. When will you be confident in saying that this person, belong, this person belongs to cluster B only. You would be confident if you have another cluster B which is far away from cluster A. Here the problem arises because there is a narrow margin. It's very close. That is the reason you have those doubts. However, if you have, if you have sorry, if you have a lot of distance, then that means the people here belong to this cluster and the people here belong to this cluster. There is no problem of overlapping. Hence, within a group, there has to be more similarity. Between groups, there has to be more dissimilarity. And this is the primary logic of clustering. And whenever you work on a data set, right, you would never get access to the complete population. It's always that you employ sampling and you sample the data. And you always do this activity on a sample. All right. Look at this example. How many features do we have here? We have a feature called, oh, let me select that. We have a feature called sex, or let me put it as x1. We have x2, we have x3, we have x4, and we have x5. So we have five features here. We have feature 1, feature 2, feature 3, feature 4, and feature 5. So the input variables are also called as features, and all the features put together is called as a feature set. All the features put together is called as a feature set. All right, so let me raise this. now. The question that we need to solve here is, out of these 12 records, what are those records which you want to cluster together? So you have four or five features, right? Feature one, four, and five. Out of these five features, what are those features which you want to group or cluster together? If you look at record one and seven, right? Both are male. Both do not wear glasses. Both do not have a mustache. Both have a smile on because they are male. They obviously will have a smile on. And both do not have a hat. Given these conditions, you can probably cluster these two together because every, each and every feature is the same. Of course, in certain scenarios, a few features might not match. Still, you might want to, you might want to cluster. But given this example, yeah, you want to probably group person 1 and 7 together. At the same time, probably you want to group a cluster person 10 and 12 together. Both are female. Both are not wearing glasses. Both do not have a mustache. Since they are women, both do not have a smile on, obviously, right? <laughs> and both do not have a hat. What does this indicate? That these two people are together. You can group them together. I mean, in a few places, there might be distinct values, but you, you try to group them. How do you group? I'm going to explain later on. But to speak in short, this is how you try to group different records together. So the idea of clustering works uh, based on the similarity, basically. So uh, let me explain about that when we get into, you know, hierarchical clustering.